Hello guys, and today um, it's Tuesday, and I'm going to be, since we watched my story animated video last Tuesday, I mean, satisfying video on Tuesday, last Tuesday, we're going to be watching a my story animated video that came out today, and yeah. And make sure to follow my TikTok account. It's called Lily's Magical World. Magical World, just like my channel. <laughs> now let's watch the new My Story Animated that came out. I was today. deployed three times. Our vehicle ended up hitting an improvised explosive device. True friends are those who care without hesitation, who remember without limitation, who forgive without explanation, and who trust without communication. The woman had a baby in her arms and ran as fast as she could, never looking back. At last, we are safe, my love. We are going to America, the land of opportunities. Our future will be different now. That's what Robin's mom had hoped for when she ran away from her husband in Brazil and moved to the USA. But making a living in the USA wasn't as easy as she thought it would be. At age four, Robin and her mom were living in a shelter home and had trouble making ends meet. On the day of Robin's fifth birthday, her mom saved enough money to take her to a playland, a place Robin had wanted to go to for a long time. Well, the playland rides were super fun, until the card was exhausted. Just when Robin's mom was about to take her off the ride, the woman came and swiped her card. Um, no, <laughs> you didn't have to. We were done. Please, let me. Hey, kid, take as many rides as you want. I need to finish this card today, or else my daughter, Summer, will have me stay here for the rest of my life. Seeing the lady's daughter jump up and down like a kangaroo on a sugar high, Robin knew what she meant. Soon the girl went running towards the jungle gym, and her mom got Robin in there too. As Robin was having fun, she heard a scream and instantly ran towards the sound to find the other girl stuck in one of the tunnels. Are you all right? Please help! Oh, thank God you're here. Yeah, you I was so scared. Really it was so... Pretty good. True friends are those who care without hesitation, yeah, who remember yeah, without limitation, yeah. who forgive without explanation, and who trust. Play like the witch's house from... All right? Please help. Oh, thank God you're here. I was so scared. It was so dark, but also colorful. Oddly like the witch's house from Hansel and Gretel. Robin pushed, and in no time the girl was able to get out of the tunnel. Both became good friends, and seeing how much both girls liked each other, Summer's mom soon offered Robin's mom a job at her home. She had to work as the cleaning lady, but she also got to have a room in the big mansion. As time passed, both girls became inseparable. Soon they started going to the same school and were like two peas in a pod. But the kids there always had something to say about how different Robin and Summer looked, especially Anya, who was mean as a snake. Together, you both make the number 10. Does Summer eat all of your food, Robin? Jerk, her weight is a temporary caloric imbalance, but your stupidity is a permanent genetic malfunction. If you say something to my friend again, I'll... Let it go, Robin. It's not worth it. Such mean comments didn't affect their friendship until they joined ballet classes together in the eighth grade. Come on, Summer. There are just five ballet positions we did this year, and you can't even get one of them right. Look at Robin. Her posture is like a delicate swan, but no buts. Come on, you can do it. Let's try it again. Seeing how hard Summer was pushing herself, Robin couldn't just sit by, so she started doing ballet and ended up landing straight into her teacher on purpose. Oops, I am so sorry. I guess lesson's over now, right? Come on, Summer. But Summer wouldn't budge. She remained standing in that awful position until there were tears in her eyes, and that's when Robin had had enough. I swear, if you don't stop, I'll never talk to you again. Then don't. I guess it would be better that way. Saying that, Summer kept on repeating the ballet steps till she was out of breath. That was the day something between the girls changed and Summer started to spend less and less time with Robin. Worse, she got into all kinds of diets and started to hang out with Anya, the same girl who used to make fun of her. Once during lunchtime, as Robin started to enjoy her chocolate muffin, she could see how badly Summer wanted it, so she offered it to her. Oh no, don't tell me you're gonna eat that. And why can't she eat that? She doesn't have to starve herself. Um, I mean, how can she eat that? You touched it. 
Aren't you her maid or something? Or her mom? Like, they clean your toilets? Summer, that's so unhygienic. Yeah, gross. Her mom does scrub our toilets. <laughs> what was I even thinking? Thanks for rescuing me, girl. Come on, let's go have some detox water. As Summer left with her new friends, Robin was left in shock. That was the day Robin promised herself to turn her life around. So she focused hard on her studies and soon started acing her exams. By the time the girls reached high school, Summer was the official queen bee of the school. She had it all, a hot body, designer clothes, designer bags. She even had followers carrying her bag for her. But there was one thing Summer didn't have, calyx. Summer had a huge crush on the school's heartthrob. The guy was the perfect combination of beauty and brains, a jock and a straight-A student. And Robin had a crush on him too. Even though Calix might have smiled at her once or twice, Robin never spoke to him, knowing how much Summer liked him. One time, Robin was running late for school and was rushing when suddenly a car zoomed by and someone threw juice on Robin. Hey, jerk, watch where you're going. Oh, it's you, of course. Ugh. Um, I didn't do it on purpose. I. Hey, come on, we're running late. And Robin, don't worry. You look the same, trashy as usual. Robin hoped that Summer would say something in her defense, but she just avoided her gaze and drove off. When Robin reached the school, she caught her reflection in a window and saw her hair was a mess. As she fixed herself, she spotted a smiling face. It was Calix behind her. Hey, what happened to you? Nothing. Just started the day on the wrong foot, I guess. Well, you still look amazing. Even, um, never mind. Saying that, Calix walked away, leaving Robin stunned. Whoa, did the Greek god-looking hunk tell her she looked amazing? He sure did. After that day, Calix and Robin's paths started to cross almost every day. One time, Robin ended up accidentally stepping on Calix's heels in the crowded lunchroom. Another time, they were paired together in the science lab. And once in the cafe, Robin was buying a donut when she realized she'd forgotten her wallet. And Calix came to the rescue. Oh, you didn't need to. This is so embarrassing. I forgot my wallet. It's... Come on, it's 50 cents. You need to loosen up a bit. Um, so I'm throwing this party, and I would love if you could come, please. She isn't gonna come. She's always too busy studying, but I'll come. Would you like that, Calix? Um, of course. Robin, do try to come, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Just as Calix left, Summer's sweet smile faded, and she glared at Robin. You know I like him. That's why you're running after him. You are pathetic, Robin. Robin felt like slapping Summer, but controlled herself. Later that night, she was all dressed for Calix's party. She wasn't doing it to make Summer jealous, but because for the first time, I used to hope Maggie Hassan would be independent-minded, but she turned out to be a party-line politician, voting for Biden's liberal agenda 97% of the time. Now, New Hampshire families are paying more for just about everything. Watch this! I cannot be stopped! That takes a team to tango. Someone from school had invited her over. Just as Robin reached Calix's place, she spotted him and was swept away when the boy came running and took her hand. <laughs> Whoa, and I thought you looked pretty in glasses. You look mesmerizing in this dress. Um, thank you. Calix then took Robin to the dance floor, and as she was having the time of her life, Robin spotted the look of hatred on Summer's face. But once the song ended, and Calix leaned in and kissed her on the cheek, it looked like Summer would explode. Oh no. Robin needed to explain to Summer that she wasn't after her crush. Calix, I... I need to go. Wait, Robin, I wanted to tell you how much I like you. But Robin was more worried about Summer. As she ran after Summer, she bumped into Anya. Well, well, what do we have here? A little birdie told me that this dress you're showing off is courtesy of Summer's mom. So I guess you wouldn't mind perhaps taking it off? Saying that, Anya ripped Robin's dress, and in seconds both girls were tangled in a fight. But Summer came and pushed Anya away. Robin, stop. You're better than her. And I'm sorry I told Anya that my mom gave you that dress. I shouldn't have. <sighs> Wanna go home? Yes, I would like that. Summer and Robin sat in the car and talked after such a long time. And for a while, Robin thought everything between them would be all right. But just then, it started raining like crazy. And Robin realized that they were going towards a cliff. 
That particular cliff had a bad reputation among the town folk for being haunted by ghosts. Why are we going there? Summer, you're so scared of horror stuff. Why do you want to see it? Uh, just wanted to look at the city from up here. Ever since I learned how to drive, I wanted to go there. I've heard the view is to die for. Once the girls reached the cliff, they both enjoyed the view. But then suddenly, someone kicked Robin out of her car. It was Anya. She had been hiding in the back seat. What are you doing? It's raining. Summer, let me in. I'm scared. This place... It's creepy. Oh no, you witch. You thought you could just steal my guy? Walking back home in this rain will teach you a lesson. Or maybe make some friends with some ghosts. <laughs> what? No, she can't walk back. It's raining. Let's just drive around for five minutes and come back for her. No way. She tried to steal Calyx? I say punish her. Saying that, Anya took the steering wheel and they both drove off while Robin kept begging for her to stop. She even ran after the car, but exhausted she fell to her knees. The next day when Summer woke up, she was sure that Robin would be sick and tired from walking back home. But to her surprise, she saw Robin's mom all worried. Summer, did you see Robin last night? I've been waiting for her all night, but she didn't come home. What in the world? As her mom and Robin's mom called all their friends and then the cops, Summer felt her world shake. But before going to school, Summer saw a shadow enter Robin's room. Perfect, she's back. Got her mom worried for nothing. But upon entering Robin's room, she saw nothing except wet shoe marks on the floor and all the way up to the ceiling. Whatever you're up to, it won't work on me, Robin. Ugh. Saying that, Summer left for school. But when the announcement of Robin's disappearance was made, she felt confused. What? If Robin was still missing, who was that at home? During break time, Summer told Anya everything, only to be laughed at. So, you're saying Robin turned into a ghost who can climb walls? Or is she now Spider-Man? I don't know. I just think we should tell the police about last night. Police? Don't be crazy. She'll be back in no time. Don't be so dramatic. A few days later, Calix visited her at night, and right then, an officer also came to speak to Robin's mom. But as she opened the door, Summer saw something behind them. A person. Robin. Oh my god. She... she's here. She's coming here. What? Who's here? Uh, kid? You alright? Scared witless, Summer ran into her room and shut herself in there. The next day at school, Anya came to Summer. You're trying to blackmail me? I'll ruin you, Summer. What are you talking about? Don't play dumb. I got this note in my locker. I know you're trying to spook me. Seeing the note, Summer's heart leapt into her throat. It was Robin's handwriting. I am coming. Everyone will pay. I swear, it's not me. It's Robin. It's actually Robin's ghost. She wants revenge, I think. OMG, what have I done? All because of you. You left her there and she isn't back. This was all your idea. Shut up. And my idea? You were the one who tricked her. Keep your mouth zipped or else. Or else what? You're horrible. I wish I could have seen your real face earlier. Robin was the only true friend I had. Yeah, and she's gone. Mouth zipped or else. Or else what? You're horrible. I wish I could have seen your real face earlier. Robin was the only true friend I had. Yeah, and she's gone. Boo-hoo. This was the point Summer realized what a jerk Anya was, and she hoped and prayed her real friend would return, alive. A week later, in the evening, her mom was out and Summer was alone, when all of a sudden the lights went off. Summer immediately lit a candle and looked out the window. She almost fell on her butt. She couldn't believe her eyes. It was, it was Robin. Robin looked deathly pale, like a ghost. You betrayed me, Summer. You betrayed me. Why did you betray me? No, no, I didn't. It was, it was a... And then there was a loud bang on the door. And in the split second where Summer looked at the door, Robin was gone from the window. But the banging kept going on, driving Summer mad. No, no, I won't open the door. Never. Just then the lock turned and Summer screamed. But her mom entered and seeing her crying on the floor, hugged her. Mom, Robin was, was outside on the porch. Oh, Mom, I did a terrible thing. Anya suggested, but it was all me. I could have said no, but I was so blind in jealousy. What? 
What are you talking about? And then Summer told her mom the entire truth. Mom, I am so sorry. I miss Robin. I wish she could come back and none of this had ever happened. I now know that jealousy is a disease and because of it, look what I did to my best friend. Oh, mom. Well, I am glad you learned your lesson. Hearing Robin's voice, Summer's eyes widened and realized Robin was in fact alive. Summer was stunned. You, you're all right. Oh, thank God. Robin, please forgive me. I crossed the line and I shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have, but, oh, Summer, I'm just glad all of this could open your eyes. And then Robin explained how Calix had followed her that night and picked her up. Even though Robin could press charges on Summer and Anya, she chose not to and decided to teach Summer a much-deserved lesson. So she hatched the whole plan with Calix. Even Calix's cousin, who was in the police force, was in on the plan and even both of their moms. Okay, you really got me there. I was scared out of my mind. But your absence told me the worth of your presence. Come here. Well, that was also a lesson too, but yeah. And that's a happy ending of my story animated. Now a few minutes of a um, game that is... Um, the... Um, uh, sorry, I don't know. Um, now what we're going to be doing is playing a few minutes of Mario Run. I don't know, because I, I just want to. Um, okay.
the end of the video make sure to like subscribe and turn like subscribe and turn those post notifications bye